get a couple of pumps today. Pretty ratty looking thing too. <clears throat> this is an AC4227. 5564 Studebaker Packard. Uh, in 55 it was just for the Studebaker truck. And then from 56 and up we went to Studebaker cars. Unique because they have a metal bowl on the bottom of it. And well, that's about it. It's a pretty rough looking thing. They had this nice casting here with this circle. And it's it's thicker inside. On the supercharged cars they, they drill it and tap it and they put a fitting in here that runs up to the supercharger. So this is the uh, the AC version, and then Carter jumped online, and they put their style out. This is a 2573. It's the same exact group of cars that this one fit. You can see the arms are similar, and it's kind of hard to put them side by side, but anyway, you get the idea. Inlet and outlet in the same spot on both pumps. This uses a glass bowl, and again, this one here is in pretty tough shape too. But we're going to clean them both up, and uh, this will be a separate video. Today we're just going to, uh, we're going to zero in on the AC style of it. First thing out of a business is clamp it in a vise, grab it by one of these ears, and you want to mark the location, scribe between the body, the body and the fuel casting, and also this top piece, because this is a separate piece too. This will turn. So we want to mark all three pieces so that they go back exactly the same way that they come off. First thing you want to do is remove that nut. Uh, better you better get, get these fittings out of the way. If they'll come out. going to hang on all the way out to the last thread. I say take these fittings out because a lot of stuff will get behind here and you won't know it. Now say this before I go on any further. As you can see it might be too hard to see it because it's it's pretty well deteriorated. But they used the uh, the Teflon tape on this. I advise against it only because it tends to shred and it gets stuck in the valves and causes misery. Use the Teflon paste if you have to seal the threads. Remove that nut. There should be a washer underneath it. Sometimes it's a fiber washer, sometimes it's a metal washer. This one I think is a fiber washer. Anyway, you gotta get it out of there. Now this top bowl is going to come off, but it's going to be kind of tough. Well, while I work on 
on this. I'll bring you back when I'm done. This I gotta show you. I just got this out, and the, but the way to get it out of there, I had to grab this with a big pair of water pump pliers and unscrew this whole thing and then tap on the end of this stud to reveal a little bit of corrosion. It's been in there a while. Well, we'll get it out of there. But it may look pretty decent from the outside. <laughs> Once you get in there, you find stuff like this. Anyway. Here's the pulsated diaphragm. Now we gotta get these six screws out of here. I expected this was going to be stuck, these two pieces together. If it is, get a putty knife, put it between the two pieces in just a few taps or more. And it'll break it loose. Oh yeah! <laughs> uh, this is nice. Interesting to see how this cleans up. That's all. That's all corrosion from water getting on, on the, in the casting. I got to dump this out first. This will lead you to the the diaphragm. You got to unhook this from the link that's inside, and you'll have a uh, there's a hole like that inside at the bottom this way, and you have to unhook it from something that looks like this. Only well, this would be like this. So you're gonna, you have to push the diaphragm down, tip it back, and then scoot it out that way. Sometimes it's easier said than done. If I'm lucky, it'll come out the first time. If not, yep. Just keep working at it, you'll get it out of there. And of course it's stuck in the... Oh, man. Corrosion on the top, soaked in oil and grease on the bottom. Nice. There's a seal down here. Obviously the seal is broken. So we want to... Uh, it's held in there by a by a metal ring, a retainer. So we want to catch the ed edge of it and pry it up. And as you can see, this seal's all destroyed. And this is going to have to take a trip to the wash tank. Um, we still got to get the the valves, so I'll.
I'll let this soak and I'll let this soak let's get the valve <laughs> let's get the valves out of there oh boy one of the valves just fell apart Casting might not make it. I can get to one of the valves through the top here. I can just I can just knock that down. That's what the valve looks like. We got one more in here. Well, what's left of the valve? Out whether this is actually going to make it or not, and I think <clears throat> I think we've got so much corrosion that it's it's blowing a hole through the thing. Right, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to be blast in order to be able to get to what's left of that. It's still. It's still a part of this valve in here. First thing that fell out was the center of it. And you can see the size of that hole. That's just what the valve looks like over here. Only this is just too much corrosion. We're going to have to send this through the glass beater before we go any further. This part here is should be a screen right underneath all this. Oh yeah. And here comes the train too. This part might make it. This is a gasket in through here. Uh, yeah, it might be too much on that too. Anyway, we're going to clean it all up clean up this mess that it made and uh, we'll see what we have after we're done. Well we have some good news and some bad news. I got all the corrosion out of there and we got holes everywhere through the side and it's not supposed to be there. I did get the, uh, the rest of that valve out though when it was stuck in here as you can see we had corrosion holes everywhere so uh, can I fix it you know I can probably coat it and fill in all the holes but I can still get these castings so that's not going to happen that stud, I wouldn't trust it. A lot of corrosion on it, and the nut's not very pretty either. So we're going to condemn these three pieces so far 
fittings came out nice. And there's one last piece to go through. Well, after I took a trip to the wash tank, got all the oil and grease out of it, and finding all that corrosion in the uh, in the fuel section, it's probably a safe bet that there's some problems with the pin and the spring. Feels good, but we're going to check it and see if it made it through. And in order to get this arm out, you got to knock this pin out. And it looks like it's smooth on both sides, so there shouldn't be any problem knocking it out through here. We just want to make sure we support it in enough spots so that it doesn't hurt the casting. Yeah, there is some wear on it. A little bit of, little bit of wear in through here. Where the, uh, where the link has been sitting. We've got to clean up these two pieces and make sure that there's no wear in here and down inside of here where this hits. So we're going to clean this all up and get a lot more of this grunge out of here. And we'll see how this does. Now that the body has been cleaned up, it came out pretty good. No corrosion here. The arm came out great. No problems here. Same thing with the link. It's still just the way it's supposed to be. And the spring even cleaned up good. But I'm going to put a new one in anyway. And now i got to go look for a casting or call a customer and see if they maybe have another spare pump that has a good fuel section on it. So we'll just hang on until we get that news back again. Well, it's been a few days since the uh, this job started. I just wanted to show right down inside of here. You can see. Let's get a pointer. You can see right in. This area right here. There's a date. Happens to be it tells me that this particular body casting came out of the mold in November of 59. Each one of these little each one of these little lines is a month. And right in the center there you, it's kind of hard to make out, but it says 59 along with the casting number on it. There's your pump number that you'd use to order a kit. We're going to install the arm and the link and see if we can get this baby back together again. Just start the pin in. And the tough part is getting these two in here, keeping that hole. From getting blocked up by bumping it around. And I 
edit it. And just tap it down. We want to keep this pin centered. If it comes out too far, then the head of the bolt interferes with it. And you won't be able to tighten it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimple the casting around this hole and it'll keep the pin from coming out because it's it's kind of a uh, it kind of narrows down at the end. So we want to just support the casting itself. Get my punch. And that'll grab that. Yeah, we'll give it one more. Over here. We gotta do the other side. put in the new spring I'd prefer that to be a little bit longer I think I'll find a longer spring okay that's better we gotta put the seal in Now the seal is very simple. It's our own design, the retainer. It's got a little lip around here. It's just a little pocket that this edge sits in. So it's just like that. And then it goes down into the pump in the center here. Use something to drive it with. Make sure that seal is in the center. Drive it home. Now again we want to dimple the casting around this, usually in four places. And that'll keep the retain it from lifting. Now before we put the diaphragm on, one thing I missed on was resurfacing this. We have to have a belt sander that I put this on and it flattens the surface along with the uh, the new fuel casting when I get it. But just make sure that this is nice and flat. I'll be right back. Sorry to take so long. You can see it's nice and flat right around in here. Touches on a few spots on the outside, but that's okay because it's going to seal right on this edge. Put a little dab of motor oil in the center. The center of that seal, just so that the pole rod doesn't run dry. This can be a tricky part. Put the spring on. Line up that slot. It's going to go in here. Now you got to catch that link. And what I do is just use this spring. It's kind of hard to see, but use the spring to bump up against that. You can just see the, the link right in here. I used that 
spring to hold that link up and it holds it up near the top of this hole so that with any luck you can get it hooked in there real quick. Now that I got the new casting in, it's a little rough in here but there's no holes in it like the other one. And a whole big hole through the top, through the bottom, and through the side. But this will work. This one here was uh, was cast in March of 57. Still, it's good. It'll work. Two gaskets, one in each hole. Where the valves are going to go. And you'll notice the... Uh, if you forget which one went where, you can see this hole here is smaller than this one. This is nice and wide open. Plus this is a little shallower. It just, this uh, seat is down deeper. And what that tells you is it's going to go rivet up into the shallow hole or the deep hole I should say. And the other valve goes down. Take your driver and just drive it home. What I generally do is I drive that in, paying attention to the the sound that it's making, and it when it reaches that seat of that gasket, the 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 sound changes just a tiny bit. You might not be able to hear it on the video, but... It does change. And that's how I tell when it's seated properly. Now if it goes in really easy, take your, uh, take your punch it just dimple the casting around the outside edges. I use a chisel that I flattened out the end so that it just it just dents it. it doesn't cut it anymore. Same thing around the other side. Be careful when you do this you don't hit the, the rubber uh, valve plate. Once those are all in, get your pulsated diaphragm. And the other casting, make sure there's a lock washer on it. Now with these pumps, these particular pumps have a metal bowl where other ones a little later on they change it over to a glass bowl. Instead of this tall apparatus here it would use a um, just a bolt going down, a screw going down through the center, center here holding this together. And I think I put this on upside down. Yeah, I did. Now that it's right, see the other way, I'd have nothing to put my little wrench on. Tighten it down good. Now the, at this particular point, the only thing you can test is the the uh, outlet valve. You should be able to suck air out and not blow it in. 
and I can do both. So one of these valves isn't seated right. It's going to be this one here. I think there might be something stuck underneath here from when I was assembling it. But let's just make sure. What I'm going to do is take something I'm going to blow a little air in through here. I think there's just a little piece of aluminum stuck underneath one of these. Yep, that's exactly what it was. It's sealed good now. And the only way we're going to be able to test the inlet one is after we get our oils back together again. Now i got to pick up a uh, screen and a gasket, which I think this is the right gasket for it. And there's a screen. This is a filter now. Make sure all these areas are all nice and flat. It'll fit right down inside the casting. New nut. And I gotta put a lock washer underneath that. That was easy. Yeah, we don't want that coming back up. We don't want any fuel coming up through that hole. Tighten this down. Now you can test your inlet. You can blow air in. You shouldn't be able to suck any air out. Oops. Kind of hard to do it with this piece in the way, but. Anyway, that'll tell you whether it's sealed here, up in the top, and it's sealed up and through here, and the valve is working right. Now, lucky me, I have a uh, piece that I can put on there, and it tells me that. There might be something stuck under the other one too. Hang on, I'll clear it out. Yeah, well, it wasn't that. It was this area in here. This nut wasn't tight enough. And it's good to go now. Now we can assemble everything. Remember your reference marks? We want to put uh, at least two screws in it, one opposite each other, get it through the diaphragm and screw it about halfway down and then screw the rest of them just all halfway down. Don't tighten them up yet. Once these screws are down halfway, put something like a, an adjustable wrench on the end of the arm just to give you some leverage because you're going to have to hold this up for a few minutes. Pull that down as far as it'll go. You'll see the diaphragm pull in. While it's up there, keep it there. Now tighten down the screws. You're preloading the diaphragm. You'll be able to make it last longer. And nothing will stretch out. If you were to tighten it up while it was all relaxed like that, you might find that you'll get a high pressure reading. And why is that? I have no idea. 
but I can tell you that it does. Once you get all these screws tight, move their arm in a relaxed position. Put your finger over the inlet and try to pull it up and you'll feel a suction there. While it's up, block off the outlet and you'll feel pressure right there. I like to go around one last time, make sure I didn't miss any of these screws. And that should bring this to an end. Aside from a gasket, put the gasket on and install it. And it's ready to go. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions and I didn't cover them during this video, post them down in the, in the comment section. And uh, I generally answer it within a few hours. If you want to get in touch with us to order a kit, remember, use that number that you find on the mounting flange. Sometimes there'll be a tag, and it'll, there'll be a number there. But give that to the person that answers the phone, along with the application. And uh, we'll see if we've got a kit for you, which we do. I can tell you right now we do, we'll have one. If you want to get in touch with us, call 781-335-8860 or on the web at then-now.com. And don't forget to click the like button, the little notification bell, and if you haven't subscribed already, click that bell also. Thanks for watching, and be safe out there.